Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. That breaking news coming from Detroit, where Chief Craig speaks out for the first time after last night's officer-involved shooting. I wouldn't call him a young black kid, but a person that was armed with a weapon, fires a shot in the direction of a police officer or a group of police officers. What the chief had to say about the conflicting stories coming from police and witnesses. A 29 year old was shot and killed inside of his home. I'm Larry Spro. I'm here live on the scene with breaking news. I'll have that in just minutes. Plus, all eyes are to the skies this afternoon as we're tracking storms that are moving into the area. That tops for news at noon. Thank you for joining us, everybody. I'm Evrod Kasumi. Let's take a live look for you outside right now. Our view from our cameras out in Romulus, Detroit, and Mount Clemens. Meteorologist Brayden Rue joining us now with a look at what we can expect as we head into the afternoon. Little uh, hit or miss, I guess, for the rest of the afternoon. Some soakers and certainly some dry times. We have 78 degrees out there right now, maybe flirting with 80. At times we get some breaks, but it's only 71 in Lapeer. Some heavier rain falling up in parts of our north zone. You notice here as we look at uh, the Gross Point area, seeing some decent showers. We have lightning tracker on and we are not seeing any of that. And there's a look at Lapeer County with some of the heavier rains moving into Metamora downtown Lapeer Imlay City and heavy soakers there. But again, nothing crazy or violent. We have temps near 80 degrees with some storm activity later in the afternoon, as well as what we're seeing right now is this cold front pushes through. So we will get some afternoon showers 3 to 7 p.m. Very scattered about the area and that cold front brings a nice change for your Wednesday. More details on that Evrod coming up. All righty, Brandon, thank you. Let's get you updated on this breaking news that we're following from Detroit's west side now, where an off duty firefighter is found shot to death inside of his own home. The body was found just after nine this morning at a home on Penrod Street in the area of Fenkel and Grand River. You're looking at video from a very active scene as police are continuing to search for clues there. Let's go live now to Larry Sproul. He's been on the scene ever since this story first broke. And Larry, police are investigating this as a homicide. That is exactly correct, Evrod. Good afternoon. Police are not releasing that much information, but we do know a firefighter was shot and killed inside of his home earlier this morning. We also know that his father is a retired firefighter here with the Detroit Fire Department. Take a look at the scene behind me. You can see family members here on scene, a very emotional scene out here. There have been a lot of tears, hugs out here all morning. Let's take a look at some of the video we shot earlier this morning. You can see police walking in and out of the home where they believe that shooting happened. Crime scene tape and police cars all around here earlier as well. Now both police and firefighters are not saying much, but a fire chief did tell me the firefighter was supposed to come to work this morning. Family found his body when they came and checked on him. We spoke to neighbors this morning, everyone and I repeat everyone out here is shot. Horrible. It's very horrible, you know, because you don't know. You don't know if it was an intruder. You don't know. So what if it was an intruder and my mom is on this block? You know, what's next? You know, that's the way you feel. You, what else is going to happen? You just don't know. And we also know that his black 2011 Ford exhibition is also missing. Now we know the name of that firefighter, but police have not released an information just yet. So we are withholding that information, but we are working to talk to family members and more neighbors out here. I'll have a live report, another live report coming up tonight at five. We're live on the west side tonight. Larry Sproul, local four. Alrighty, Larry, thank you for the update. Our hearts certainly go out to the victim's family there. Meantime, the other big story that we're following for you at this hour, Chief Craig speaking out now for the very first time after last night's officer involved shooting. We want to show you some video from the scene. Local 4's Nick Monticelli was there and joins us now live this afternoon. And Nick, what did the chief have to say? There's a difference in opinions and a recount of what happened according to police and witnesses. You know what, Evrod, this is a tale of two completely different stories. Last night around 10 o'clock, police were forced, according to them, to shoot a 24-year-old man 
The family says it wasn't necessary. DPD says it was absolutely necessary. Take a look at this video. All this happening on Detroit's west side. And again, 10 o'clock on Asbury in the city of Detroit, obviously. Chief Craig says that officers came across a group of young men. He says they noticed a bulge near the waistband of one of them. And when they started to get out of their car, that man immediately took off running north towards 8 Mile. The chief says at some point, that man allegedly pulled a gun and fired a single shot at the three officers that were chasing him. None of them were hit, but two of them returned fire. That 24 year old's family, though, says he was shot in the back and there is absolutely no way that he shot at those cops. DPD, though, obviously disagrees. As the officers began to pursue him on foot for about, I want to say maybe five houses, suspect uh, removed a handgun from his pocket, and so they responded. I would stake my life on the fact that he did not shoot at the police. Now, the 24-year-old's family also says that he is in the intensive care unit in critical condition at Sinai Grace Hospital, and they are also very angry over there, saying that they could not get any information from hospital staff on that 24-year-old's condition for at least seven hours up until about five o'clock this morning. They didn't even know if he was dead or if he was alive. Now, we do know this 24-year-old's name, but it's looking like he is going to be charged by the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office, so we're going to hold off on releasing his name until then, though the chief does say that he has a criminal history and even a warrant from out of state. He says that criminal history includes some fraud cases. We're live at DPD headquarters. Nick Monticelli, Local 4. All righty, Nick, thank you for the update. Let's get you caught up on some breaking news now from Alexandria, Virginia, where a federal court jury is in its fourth day of deliberations in the fraud trial of former camp Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort. The jury is set to note, send a note to the judge a short time ago asking how they should proceed if they can't come to a consensus on a single count. Now, the jury is considering 18 counts of tax and banking fraud against Manafort for allegedly hiding income from foreign governments. Of course, we'll continue to monitor this there from the courthouse. Developing at this hour, a Wayne County deputy facing charges after allegedly driving drunk. Police say this man, 27-year-old Robert Fontana, was going about 90 miles an hour northbound on I-75 in Auburn Hills when he nearly hit another car. While well, he was pulled over for drunk driving and arrested, Fontana was also in possession of a firearm. And while he was in transport to the station, he allegedly got his handcuffs in front of him and tried to choke himself out. Fontana is locked up now in the Oakland County Jail. Well, in political headlines, there is a new claim of Russian interference in American politics, and this claim coming from company, computer company Microsoft. The company is saying that it discovered fake websites that posed as a reliable Republican organization. And those organizations differ with President Trump in their opposition to Russia. Microsoft seized control of the, of the sites, which it says were controlled by Russia's main intelligence agency. Microsoft says it's offering free cybersecurity protection to candidates and political organizations that use its software. President Trump is today quoted saying that if he wanted to, he could take over the special Russia investigation and run it himself. The president made that claim in an interview with the Reuters news service. And while the president has attacked the investigation in Twitter messages, he told Reuters that he is keeping his distance from it. But he said that he could step in and take action himself. He said that he was staying out of it, but he didn't have to. In fact, he thought he could run it if he wanted to. Well, some former federal prosecutors say a president cannot be in control of his own investigation. The president also told Reuters that he is reluctant to be interviewed by the Russia investigators because statements he makes, even if he believes them to be true, could be turned against him and lead to perjury charges. Well, the Trump administration is making good on its pledge to do away with clean air rules that were put in place by the Obama administration. The EPA unveiled a proposal today which called ACE, which stands for Affordable Clean Energy, and the proposal allows states and not the federal government to determine how to best restrict greenhouse gas emissions that contribute to global warming. The Obama era rules put tight restrictions on coal fire power plants. President Trump will tout the new rules in coal country when he visits West Virginia a little bit later today. All right, so to come here on Local 4 News at noon, we are getting our first look at the man accused of shooting his own supervisor in Sterling Heights. We'll tell you more about the incident that is raising eyebrows. 
Plus new developments in the search for missing Iowa student Molly Tibbetts. Why police believe she's no longer alive. And we do continue to monitor breaking news for you from the city's west side where an off duty Detroit firefighter was found shot to death inside of his home. His body was found just after nine this morning on Penrod Street in the area of Fenkel and Grand River Avenues. The victim is a 29 year old man. His truck is also missing from the scene and the police are investigating as the incident is now being called a homicide. So we're going to continue to follow this and bring you any new developments.